is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference Extra, a special segment of Today in L.A. Weekend in this extraordinary period in our nation's history. Joining us from Washington is Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press, which airs every Sunday morning here at 8 o'clock. So, uh, Chuck, one of the most interesting aspects of this entire episode is there are things we know. And that is, you need to stay at home. Those stay at home orders are vital. We also know that it's going to get worse over the short term. But it's astonishing how little we know. And that is, yes, there's extreme damage to the economy, but we don't have a metrics for where, when, what success looks like. We're not sure when this ends. We're not sure if there's going to repeat of this in the fall. And we're not sure even to the extent of whether you should cover your face. Now we're saying, yes, wear a mask in public, whereas for weeks we've been told you don't need to wear a mask in public. Um, talk to us about that and about the need for the, 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 the president, the White House, and the, the chambers of government to help try to calm the fears of a nation that is, that is striking out blindly here. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, thing that they could do is just simply speak with one voice. It was a bit frustrating just watching uh, during the Thursday briefing. Dr. Burks essentially um, imploring Americans, please, 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 will you abide by this order? You're, not enough Americans are doing it. I mean, she was point blank saying, it isn't working yet. We haven't flattened the curve. France is flattening the curve. Spain is flattening the curve. We're not flattening the curve. And then you saw this cell phone heat map um, that has been making the rounds. The New York Times that, have, that showed a way to sort of track to see how movements are people doing it. And you're seeing in California they are, in the Northeast they are, in pockets of places, say in South Florida they are. But you saw so much movement in the center of this country, in the southern part of this country, and what, and that's the, you know, and that's been, I think, the frustration uh, you see on that task force. But the president here, she was doing this. The president was standing behind her, and he didn't chime in and said, please, please, please listen to the doctor with that same kind of urgency that the doctor had. So I do think speaking with one voice, leveling with the public on things we don't know, I do think elected officials in general hate not admitting they don't have an answer. And I think instinctively they say, you know, maybe in 30 days, maybe in 45 days, maybe in two months. And it's an instinctive wanting to please the constituent, but I think it's setting, it's setting the country up for, for frustration if you keep doing that. I, I saw the map in the New York Times and it was fascinating and it essentially gave you a picture of the 2016 election. Yes, You saw did. the coasts that were abiding by the stay at home order, but much of the president's support in the, uh, certainly in the Sun Belt, certainly in, in upper Florida, um, they, they were not. And, and I, I'm wondering if historians take a look at this, they'll say this is the ramifications, in, the, the deadly ramifications of a polarized political yeah. system. It's, it's a, that's what I keep coming back to, Conan, is that, oh, my God, we are now governing by polarization. And we are now, you literally have half the country listening to one part of the government and half the country listening to one entity within the government. And that's it. And it's, it's as almost, we are two Americas, we are two different countries, and that, in a pandemic, we, we don't have the ability to do that. This virus doesn't, oh, wait, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you know, there isn't, there isn't any evidence of that. Um, so it's, this is, this has been what many uh, public policy per, uh, professionals, many social scientists have been concerned about in a real health crisis. What happens when half the country views a government's order through only through a political lens? It, it, it's the situation we're living. I, I don't want to be a too dire here, but my father went through the Depression. He was mm -hmm. an officer in World War II. And I remember him telling me, you got to have a saleable skill mm -hmm. in case there's another Depression. Yes. And I remember thinking, that's not going to happen now. But we are looking at jobless numbers that are similar to what happened in, right after That's 1929. Right. And that was an episode which changed the nation. Chain, every person who went through that was, was changed Forever. deeply by it. Yes. Is that what we're facing? Think about it this way, Conan. Imagine if, you have, if you're under the age of 40 
I look at it, I'm going to look at it slightly different because I completely believe that this is going to essentially impact a generation, if not two generations, on what they want from their government, um, how they go about looking for work. I completely agree. But look at it this way. If you're over the age of 40, you do remember when the government did big things. You know, I, this, you know, I was alive when they, how they get that space shuttle up there and it came back and you saw the government do big things, land on the moon, solve big problems, win the Cold War. But if you're under the age of 40, you've seen only government failure. You've not seen government do the big things and do it right. So I think it's going to, I think you're going to have a massive, you're going to that the millennials already, um, uh, concerned about capitalism, distrustful of, of, of how some of this has gone about, but also open to more collective action. And I think this is only going to reinforce that even more. I think the, the, the how a generation views what government should do is going to radically change, and you're going to see elected officials have to respond to it or get voted out. I think that is the large-scale change that may come over this country over the next two, four, six years in the fallout of this pandemic. Who's on the program? Got a couple of governors, uh, Jay Inslee, uh, Asa Hutchinson, obviously uh, dealing with it in two very different ways, uh, the Surgeon General, and the Prime Minister of Italy, um, who is basically, as Mike Pence said, we are Italy right now. Italy's about two weeks ahead of us. So hopefully they are only now seeing some plateauing of, 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 of their rates. So maybe he can give us a little hint about what's to come. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, looking forward to it. 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Chuck Todd, thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you, sir. You too. NBC4's news conference at 9 o'clock follows Meet the Press, and we'll be talking with Congressman Adam Schiff with regard to his measure in the Congress to form sort of a 9-11 commission looking at how the government responded to this crisis. Plus, we'll be talking to the Speaker of the California State Assembly, Anthony Rendon, on how the California legislature is responding, and Super Attorney Brian Kabatak, former chair of the L.A. County Bar Association, on the crisis facing the courts. That's news conference at 9 o'clock following Meet the Press. We'll see you there.